It's the battle between two phenomenal players of Indian chess. SL Narayanan with the white pieces takes on India number one, Gukesh. They both faced off against each other at the World Cup as well. And at that point, it was Gukesh who knocked out Narayanan with a score of one and a half half. Will Narayanan get his revenge here? D4, Knight to F6. C4 played. Actually, it's a very interesting clash of styles. But at the same time, Narayanan and Gukesh have some similarities in their play. They both love to calculate and they are kind of machines when it comes to calculations. Knight comes out to F3. And Gukesh plays the Queen's Gambit declined with D5. In fact, Gukesh always loves to convert things into Ragozin territory by playing bishop to b4. Will he do that? No, he first plays his knight to d7. And this is a very subtle way to play the queen's gambit decline because you're not really determining the position of your bishop. C takes d5, played by Narayanan. He takes the pawn in the center. Gukesh captures it back. And now this bishop can go to e7, d6, b4, depending on the way in which white plays. So white goes bishop g5, pins the knight. Now a normal move would be bishop e7 to stay in the queen's gambit declined territory. But Gukesh of course goes into the Ragozin now with bishop to b4, pinning the knight. And this is something that I'm sure Narayanan is well prepared because this is one of Gukesh's main repertoire moves. So he goes knight d2. Now with this move, he's breaking the pin and also ideas like h6, g5, knight e4, all of this no longer happening. So c6 played by Gukesh. He's still in his prep. And now white can develop the bishop with e3. Yes, the bishop will come to d3, which is a good square for it to sit on. How is Gukesh going to continue next? He plays his knight to f8. Very interesting move. Notice what he wants to do. He wants to go to g6 and then kick the bishop when the bishop can no longer stay on this diagonal. This does remind us of lines of the Italian or the Spanish, you know, where the knight from b1 goes to d2 to f1 to g3. In the same way, Gukesh's knight is going to g6. Exactly. He's gone to g6 here. We have seen this in previous games before being played. And Narayanan now, I guess, would love to castle it out. Perhaps, yes, he castles it. And now I was wondering if h6 makes sense. But the problem is that after take, queen takes, there is this very nice move. Knight takes pawn, pawn takes and check, which creates problems. So h6 is not possible just as now. But castling is a good move. A3. Now Narayanan first tells Gukesh, give me your bishop. And if you take, I want to take back and later strike in the center with C4. So Gukesh goes back with his bishop. And now the bishop is angling towards the H2 square. What does Narayanan do? He has already taken 14 minutes on the clock. Which shows that perhaps he's not in his prep or maybe he's still in his prep and he recollected all the moves f4 wow that's a very interesting move because he wants to perhaps push f5 h6 played by gukesh and i think narayanan has to now part away with his bishop there's no other way he takes on f6 queen takes f6 now the e3 pawn has become weak but on the other hand the knight can switch and go here so f5 definitely should be considered when you have to calculate these moves like queen g5. But Narayanan plays knight f3 which is kind of a soft move. And Gukesh has this nice opportunity to trade these bishop with bishop f5. And I believe his position is completely fine. You know, black has no problems out of the opening. The bishop will sit well on f5. However, Gukesh is tempted by bishop g4. And the reason is, I think, that he doesn't want the knight to come to e5, which means that the pawn on e3 remains a bit weak, and he can actually go and double down on this pawn. 
so it's a deep concept but at the same time you have to part away with your bishop because otherwise he's once again threatening to come to uh, e5 he takes it now the thing is with bishop takes f3 rook takes f3 you've given away an important bishop and while tactically black is doing very well the e3 is weak and you can double up you know dynamically white has great attacking chances especially with moves like g4 g5 and you will see that narayanan oh he goes king h1 and maybe he's preparing rook to g1 and then going g4 g5 whoa that could be really a huge attack coming up but gukesh continues with his idea of doubling down the e file and putting pressure on this pawn which is backward and weak Narayanan brings his rook to f1. I was wondering if rook to g1 would make sense also because then you are threatening g4. It is possible but Narayanan has for the time being kept his rook on f1. Rook e8 played. e3 is hanging and now the knight can actually go back and defend it. And notice how the rook has actually gone on the other side. So this knight which comes back and defends the pawn is no longer breaking the coordination of white pieces gukesh goes knight f8 he has 57 minutes on the clock narayanan has 48 minutes g4 whoa narayanan is fearless he goes g4 and he's on to the attack now queen g2 g5 gukesh you can see has thought for nearly 22 minutes he's now down to 33 on the clock he's not comfortable with his position he plays his pawn to g6 here and the queen goes to g2 i get a feeling that although black's pieces look pretty well positioned it's white who is calling all the shots queen g7 and now narayanan can already break through with this move f5 it looks so powerful if you take I take with the rook and it's totally better. But Narayanan plays the other pawn push which is also very good. He goes g5 and his point is that if you play f5, uh, sorry h5, now I go f5. So Gukesh cannot really push. He takes the pawn and now Narayanan can take back with the pawn opening up the f file. Yes, he takes it. Now the rook has opened up putting pressure on the f7 pawn. How does Kukesh continue here? He's so passive. And you know his two rooks ambitions are being stopped by this one knight defending the pawn. Kukesh goes knight to h7 and pawn moves up to h4. Very nice move. Narayanan slowly and steadily building the attack. Maybe rook h3, h5 is on the cards. So Kukesh gets a little bit impatient and goes c5. One good idea is knight f2 because cd4, knight g4, d3, rook f7 and knight h6 check coming up would have been a nice way to play. But he goes bishop d5, attacks the rook, rook f8, much better. But Gukesh goes rook d8 and now can Narayanan find this epic move which is knight to c3 which attacks the pawn on d5 and he finds it. What a move. It's not so easy to defend this pawn because if you move your bishop away, you can lose this pawn or also get into some brutal tactics like these. So Gukesh takes on d4 and he attacks the knight. Narayanan can take the pawn back but then queen takes d4 and black is actually doing very well. So he takes on d5, attacks the rook. There's no discovered attack on the knight so the rook has to move. Gukesh goes rook e4 attacking the h4 pawn. If you look at the time, Gukesh has 8 minutes. Narayanan has 15 minutes on the clock. And now this very cool move, rook h3 defending the pawn. Also unleashing an attack on the rook. So Narayanan is totally better now. He's actually going to win a pawn now. Rook e5. But, well, the knight is defended. And I'm going to take this out. Yes, e takes d4. And Narayanan has now 8 minutes. So has, so also Gukesh. Both have 8 minutes. But Narayanan is completely winning. Rook f5 played by Gukesh. But you can take the rook and spoil black structure. Narayanan takes. Pawn takes. And you can see like a move like knight e3, knight f5. 
black is an, in big trouble because you're pawn down, your structure is also bad. So for Gukesh, this is a very tough one. Queen f2, attacking the pawn here on f5. You have to defend it. He goes rook c8 and he tells that if you take here, then after I give a check, it's already a lot of counterplay because the queen is coming in. So that's the reason why Narayanan instantly trades the rook. Fantastic move once again. And I think you should take back with the pawn, bolstering your center, central pawn there. Yes, your a3 pawn is a little weak now and the bishop can come and take it. But this is also hanging. So first Gukesh saves this pawn. And I think the best move here is to go back with your bishop and attack it. Once again, Narayanan finds the best move. He goes back bishop d3 and attacks the pawn on f5. Gukesh now goes queen e6. 4 minutes 33 seconds, 34 moves have been played. 6 more moves before the players get 30 minutes extra on the clock. Will Gukesh manage to survive? Narayanan makes a mistake pushing the pawn. In fact, knight e3 would have been so strong because then the knight sits here on a beautiful square. But instead he goes c4 and Gukesh finds the best move. f4 threatening check. Queen must drop back and stop this because that is a massive threat. But Narayanan wants to take the pawn. This is not a good move because now Gukesh can go queen g4, attack the knight and also have all sorts of threats now. Here, this position, black is back. No, but Gukesh takes on f4. That is one miss there because Gukesh generally fantastic at defense. King takes f7, queen takes f4 and we go into a queen endgame now where Narayanan has still excellent chances to convert because he's two pawns up right now. Okay, Gukesh will capture back one of the pawns. We are on move number 38. So he takes on c4. Well, objectively, this might be holdable, but in a practical game, it's very tough. Narayanan goes h5. That is a good move. He's using his pawns to push the king back. And then he also has a deep passer. Gukesh must start galvanizing his queenside pawns. And that's exactly what he does with b5 because if he can quickly create a passer on the queen side, he will be in the game. But if he cannot, then white already has a lot of pawns moving up. Queen e4 check. And now we have hit move number 40, king g8. And a question. Ooh, Gukesh does, plays his king to g8 things. He's like, I still have 1 minute 26 seconds. I must be very careful. Because in a queen end game, where you move your king, is going to determine the outcome of the game. Very important to move your king safely. Gukesh just making sure that 1, 2 and 3, which is the best option for him. He goes king g8, that's the best. Now Narayanan is at crossroads. He's like, should I play with my pawns and queen or should I bring my king also into the game? Because it's an important question. And I think take, bringing the king in would be very good here. But first he gives a check. That's fine. You can give some checks and keep the position as it is. Gukesh goes king to h7. And I think Narayanan must go back with queen e4. Then bring his king up. And he still has excellent winning chances. But he rushes into it. He goes g6 and now the position is equal <laughs> one move that Gukesh can play is king at six but it's very tough to play this humanly this is still equal so he makes the more human move of taking the pawn queen takes on g6 king h8 played by Gukesh and uh, the problem here for Narayanan is that his d pawn is not moving forward so easily queen f6 check so Gukesh has to decide between here and here. I believe putting your king here means that h6, queen h7, queen g7 could be made. So he goes king h7 because now if you play h6, there is always this move queen c7 uh, trying to hold on. So he plays queen f5 check. And now Gukesh must not blunder into king h6, queen g6 mate. He must keep uh, a good move. Uh, he should, he goes king g7. That's a mistake. King g8 was the best. The reason why this is a mistake is subtle. 
because the queen can get the e5 square and it's a very important square there d5 you will see the reason why this square is important is because d6 can come forward if you had gone king g8 it's not so simple after d5 to play d6 because there's a check and you lose the pawn king g7 d5 a5 means that now narayanan can actually give this check and play d6 he does it he gives this check that's why these end games are so subtle and so difficult because you have to see all these little checks king at six played by gukesh and now white can push the pawn to d6 it's it's so interesting that actually white king is not a all taking part in this entire thing that's happening narayanan feels that his queen and pawn is enough b4 gukesh says if you now push the pawn i'm ready with a check to take this pawn so you can't push it so meanwhile let me push my pawns narayanan first takes on b4 and i think a b4 is something that gukesh will play yes pawn takes b4 so now his pawn is also just three steps away from queening although white's pawn is just two steps away from queening first queen f6 check a mistake he had to find this only check that was winning which was queen e3 but it's very tough to understand why exactly it's winning uh, you know the queen has to take a certain square now king h5 the problem is still d7 is met with check and you oh not check there but check here and you lose the pawn so queen f5 check so you see he's taken control of this square now gukesh must move his king back which he does the position is equal and narayanan now has to push his pawn gukesh is down to 5 minutes on the clock d7 played now the way to draw this game is to give a check king g1 and place the queen on d6 it's a tough way to defend because generally you want to keep giving checks but with this check gukesh has spoiled the draw now he's losing the game because white pawn is going to queen well in some ways you feel the comfort of controlling this queening square by putting your queen there but the queen is just too passive here and narayanan now goes queen e6 check he knows that he's winning he's actually managed to outplay gukesh in this very complicated end game king g7 played and now there is king h3 which is a brilliant move because if you go here queen g5 is a draw and so narayanan finds this amazing move king h3 keeping his cool gukesh pushes the pawn to b3 but i think he's a bit too slow now queen e8 means that there is no check Gukesh goes queen f6 but can i just not make a queen now well gukesh is hoping that there is some perpetual checks that he can give because his pawn is still two steps away from queening but where is the per where is the perpetual because he gives a check and now after king h4 the thing is if you give more checks my king moves forward and the queen can later on come in between to block the checks so narayanan has won the game what a grandiose struggle there between gukesh and narayanan amazing and really like the fact that gukesh and narayanan started analyzing instantly it's amazing to see them talk and discuss which means that win or losing more important than that is actually to understand where they went wrong and uh, that is epic i leave you guys with watching them analyze maybe you might not be able to hear them so well but just soak in the spirit of the game